moved on to the side hoop. This one is going to be a little bit trickier than the main hoop because it's bent on two different planes. So we've got the first bend in, that was easy. Now based off CAD, we need to put this in the bender angled over at 50 degrees and then put the second bend in here at 37.7. Luckily I've got someone else here helping me so if it doesn't work it's not my fault. Roll cage set to roll bar, left of roll bar set to rotation of 50 degrees and uh, we need to do this bend at 37.73 is this going to work? is this going to, going to work? work. Okay. so amazingly the side bars have worked out very nicely and we're just fish mouthing the end of them now with our new tube notching machine and just to show you how easy it is to use I've grabbed the nearest tensioner to demonstrate the use okay these side hoops have gone in very nicely um, yes yeah, super close to the body all the way around maximum clearance of the helmet looking good uh, next job is to mark off all the legs at their correct height and trim them off and then make up the plates to go over these holes. I need to, need to cut these as short as I can so I can drop the whole cage down as low as possible to have some chance of welding up around the roof. I don't know what's going on but everything is going right at the moment I'm getting very worried. So the cage legs all sit on a 3mm plate I'm going to fold down there. So I'm going to go around with, uh, with a scribe and an old lathe tool sitting on top of a 3mm spacer and just mark around the leg. So I know where we've got to cut. Yeah. Okay, the rear hoop is coming along nicely. It's got the the main cross bar in place um, and the last thing to do is add the last of the transverse bars that is uh, the hardest mount bar. Um, I want to complete everything that's in the, inside the rear hoop because my plan is to remove the entire rear hoop out of the car, weld it all up as one piece and then put it back in. Bit of a risky manoeuvre um, there's a good chance it could move when I'm welding. Um, not too worried about it moving in this direction because it's obviously braced up, but uh, I don't want it to twist or, or sort of warp, so uh, that could get interesting. But I've really got no choice because I've got to weld all the way around behind the bars and I need to add a gusset, a 3D gusset, all the way around, so I'm going to have to take it out to weld it up. <clears throat> anyway, we'll cross that bridge when we come to it. Like I said, the last bar to do is this transverse bar. So I thought I'd do a bit of a step-by-step -step of, uh, yeah. of fish mouthing a tube. You just need to make two cuts on that tube at that angle, intersecting in the center of the tube. Um, to the tube notcher. So here's the new toy, the Notch Master. A super rigid, fairly expensive tube notcher. Um, I mean, it's a pretty basic operation. Got a really nice big V V block arrangement with a big heavy duty clamp to clamp the tube in, and uh, a swing arm here with uh, with a little angle gauge, and um, this aluminium bearing block that's got two massive needle roller bearings that this shaft spins in and can slide in and out, and a just electric hand drill just powers it all. Um, yeah, super chunky, works really well. I've used a couple of other ones on the drill press that just um, wobble around all over the place. This gives really reliable cuts. Gives really reliable cuts whether you get the angle right or not. It's just, uh, they just don't fit. Anyway, let's hope we got the angle right. So we've got the 
0.5 degrees that we measured, but uh, the angle gauge from this is off 90, so 90 minus 35.5 is 54.5, which is what I've got this set to. Uh, I've got this hose clamp sitting on here as a bit of a depth stop, because with this cut, I want to do one cut, rotate the whole thing by 180 degrees, and then do a second cut. Um, and if the depth of the tube stays the same, those two cuts should be on the center line of the tube. To get the 180 degrees, I've got this V-block clamped to the tube, uh, and that is on the same angle as this top surface, so I can, once I've done this cut, spin it around, get the level back on it, and uh, yeah, well, that's the plan. Let's see how we go. Actually, I've changed my mind. So as you can see, I've uh, removed the rear firewall, a thoroughly disgusting job to, due to an overuse of silicon and uh, this expanding foam. Anyway, that's all out, and I did that because I'm going to move the harness bar into this rear bulkhead. Uh, the harness bar was originally in here, uh, but the seat sits pretty much hard against the, the rear main hoop and it gave very little clearance between the, uh, the harness bar and the seat and there's a buckle that needs to go in there. It could have worked but it was all getting pretty close. Anyway, so a quick email to CAMS and they've allowed us to run the harness bar inside this bulkhead. Um, and that's good for a few reasons. Um, it means with the bulkhead out, uh, bulkhead, with the firewall out, I think I can get to every part of the rear hoop and the cross to weld, so I don't have to weld it outside the car. Uh, uh, gives us good options for where we put the harness bar. It means we can put the harness bar in later once the seats are in, so we can get the height exactly right. Um, and yeah, and the firewall had a whole lot of, bunch of holes for fittings and screws and stuff, which I would have had to plug up, so now I can make a nice, neat new firewall. So like I said, I think I can weld the whole thing in place, but I, I need to check. Uh, the, the rear cross requires two gussets. Uh, I'm pretty sure I'm going to be able to get to the gusset, but it's going to get very close to this, this top bar. So I'm going to make those gussets now to double check. Uh, I've got to pull the whole lot out anyway because I need to clean up the chassis where the roll cage feet uh, weld to. Um, but that'll be the next job. So first job, two little triangulated gussets. So here's the gusset we're going to make. A little three-dimensional gusset as uh, specified by the regs. Which is a little bit... Got a little bit of a tricky sort of geometry going on to uh, bend around the tube. Uh, SolarWorks has got this pretty neat feature where you can flatten out uh, curved sections. So I flattened out that curved section and uh, created a two-dimensional drawing of this gusset and uh, printed it out. So now it's just a simple matter of tracing around there, cutting it out and bending it up and uh, ready to be formed. Um, I've put a slight bend in it on the bender just to keep everything square, just to help line it up and we'll use this bit of tube to uh, form it. Now in the past I've gone medieval with a hammer and a vise but uh, uh, I think I might try to set something up in the press this time. I've got a couple of plates clamped to the uh, clamped to the press to create a bit of a chasm. Uh, a tube to act as a former, just a V-block to help try and sort of keep everything reasonably straight. See if this works. Oh, we're a clamp slipping. Let's try that again uh, with the clamps actually done up this time.
not a bad fit at all and it looks like I've got just enough room to weld it in situ so I think it's time to rip out the cage put the headphones in chuck some stone tool pilots on and spend a couple of hours grinding and cleaning all the uh, weld areas on the chassis not looking forward to it so we're onto these roof bars now and to be honest they're doing my fucking head in um, we were originally going for the V style configuration because I thought that was going to give us more room for our helmets but with the new style of helmets they're quite large and they end up pushing your head quite a fair way off the back of the seat so the uh, the cross configuration actually gives us much more room so going back to that the good thing about that is that we don't need to add the extra bracing in the back but it does mean that these these bars are quite complicated um, this one one of them has to be a continuous bar so there's two reasonably complex fish mouths and then two bends to follow the the roof line and we need every millimeter of space that we can get the CAD unfortunately can only take us so far because it's really hard to model the sort of curvature of the roof um, I tried one tube directly off CAD and it didn't work out so what I've resulted to apart from beer walk back a bit is uh, doing the two single parts first and then I'm going to try and use these as a template to make the one continuous one uh, I don't know how well it's going to turn out it's going to be quite tricky because just making these separate ones was tricky enough the CAD does provide some really good templates for the fish mounts and I think if we follow these bends and the distances between them, we've got a hope of actually making this one continuous bar. All right, bend number one done. I've lined it up with a square to get it uh, parallel in position. And then I've marked the end of that tube. I've also marked the uh, a reference point on the uh, on the on the fish mouth of the tube, so we can uh, cut the uh, the notch out later. So now we need to replicate this bend, the right distance away from this bend. So now we can take our paper template of the fish mouth and slide it over the tube. Come on. Get in the hole. We line up the gap with that line we scribed, the center line, because we'll line up in CAD. And then we line up the edge of the fish mouth with that mark we put all the way around the tube. Now that should give us a mirror image of this fish mouth on that tube. Um, so I've used the CAD model to, to print this out. Um, what I've done in the past when I've just sort of build a cage freehand is um, put a bit of paper, put it over the tube, ham it around a fish mouth to get the profile, undone the masking tape, wrapped it around the other way and you get the mirror image on another tube. So that's a bit more of a low tech way of doing it. Anyway, so now I'll just mark around here with the texter. And uh, we'll take it over to the grinding station. It's like nine o'clock on like Christmas Eve, so I'm sure my neighbours won't mind a bit of 
Bit of Christmas grinding. So it's been an emotional roller coaster, but I think we finally have a nice fitting main roof diagonal. Uh, yeah, it's very close to the roof, couldn't get it much closer. Uh, fish mouths look good. So I've tacked it into place and I've run a string line where we want the other bar, and I'll use that to work out what angle the intersection is with the digital protractor. And then we'll take our other tube over to the notcher. Tube notch has done its magic. That bar is fitting in there spot on. So I think I will tack it in place. And uh, before I attack the last leg, I will throw the seat in and uh, get in the car and make some brum brum noises. That it is. This is a pretty tight fit in here, but amazingly, I've managed to sculpt out quite a large area for the helmet. Um, not hitting any of the bars, got, got enough room to run the required padding around them, doesn't limit any motion. So I'm calling that a massive win. So last thing to do is to install the last tube. And then start thinking about how we're actually going to weld this thing into place. Permission to burst the tower. That's a negative Ghost Rider. The pattern is full. We've got the cross completed now. Looking good. Uh, I've tacked it as much as I can from underneath. The cross requires a couple of uh, gussets similar to the rear cross. Uh, and clearly space is fairly limited between the roof so I'm not going to be able to weld it in situ. So the current plan is to remove this whole assembly along with the front bar out of the car then I'll tack it from into the locations that I can't get to at the moment, refit it, make sure it hasn't moved and then start welding it all up as a separate item. So I've got the cross out uh, onto the comfort of the uh, the fab bench and I've gone around and tacked all the spots I couldn't get to previously while it was in the car. Uh, this bar did spring out a little bit um, which was to be expected because it's unsupported where everything else has sort of got a, a you know it's attached at more than one point. Um, so I rather than grind the tacks off and reposition it I put a really heavy weld around this section to pull the bar back into the spot I wanted it to and that worked well, so sort of tweaked it out by that, that millimetre. Um, so now we'll just go around and, and weld it all up carefully, swapping side to side and 
and trying to keep the distortion to a minimum. This bar's the problem one because, it's, like I said, it's unsupported, but now I've got this big heavy weld here that's cooled down. That'll really sort of help lock it into place, and now if I just do some sections at a time, it should stay in the right spot. So, um, time to turn the welder to 11. Mention, got a new welding helmet for Christmas, the widescreen version. Thanks, Mum. Something a little bit easier for the next job, I reckon.